Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 222. I had my son doing a little math this morning going, well, if we do these meetings every other week, how many, how long have we been doing this? And he's like, whoa, wow, okay. <laughs> so he quickly, you know, divide by two and da 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 I was like, yeah, okay. Um, or multiply by two and da, da, da. then I said, but I made it harder for him because I said there was actually one point in time where we we're doing these meetings weekly when we we're doing some of the triage, so we couldn't yeah. get an exact number. But and um, we skipped, and then some we've skipped, right? But I think in the end we decided that we've probably been doing meetings um, longer than his sister has been around, which um, I thought was <laughs> kind of funny. Anyway, it's October twenty first, twenty twenty one. We're going to say hi. Everybody in the chat, go ahead and say hi. I'd love to have you here. I know there's a couple of you here. And so we'll say hi. What are we doing today? We're doing triage because we always do triage. I don't think that's going to take us long. Um, I'll have a quick .NET Foundation update. It will be quick. I promise. Uh, then we'll do design discussions. I will make no promises about how long that will take. Um, and then we'll do questions and comments and things like that. So without further ado, let's go jump into triage. Bob, you ready? This is going to be a long triage session, so I'm ready. What? Are we talking about your two things? No. Okay. Then we're just talking about this one, which I'm quite confident is a rehash of the Windows bug that popped up in Windows 10, where they stopped formatting things in this spot, right? I'm pretty sure. Um, it's. I thought it happened... I thought it happened more than once too. Like yeah. we had um had it come up just eight. Yeah, I, I I don't know what they're doing to break it. <laughs> right. I it doesn't seem like something that should break or should change or any of those things. So I'm perplexed, but I also know that we don't have anything to do with that text being rendered if that's in the native Windows installer UI. So external, tell them to go take it up with Windows. I think that's the only thing that we can do. Yep, I think so too. All right. I think that's triage. I we think Bob was being, being sarcastic. Not that that's ever going to happen. No. No, no. All right. So let's talk about why you're all here. No, that's not true. Um, it's a very short meeting. Most of this is left over. Um, the Wix project is on still on public GitHub. Uh, the migration was successful. I feel very confident saying that at this point in time. Um, the things that are broken are not surprise or that were broken were enumerated last time. The CLI bought in the build, and that seems to be the extent of it. Um, had to fix some minor things, but all of it's just yep, all in the active. Um, it's just the move. Um, in the meantime, the .NET Foundation has uh, publicly stated that any project that wants to move off of the .NET Foundation's GitHub Enterprise uh, certainly can be, um, and, or could be, would be. And I don't know how many people opted to. I know a number of people did. Uh, I don't know if they're already been moved or whatnot. And I've been thinking about the uh, fact that the way that I did it was created more work for me uh, because of all this and the more I've thought about it the more I've and, and knowing now how it all ended up the .NET Foundation would have moved it for us uh, just through you know by I don't know pushing the button the other direction I think you have to contact GitHub support to do it but whatever telling them yes please do this move um, made me go yeah I've slept a lot better for the whole last two weeks just knowing that everything was taken care of so it was worth it um, the minimal project disruption was the CLA bot and the builds. Um, the CLA bot, turns out that the CLA bot, there are two different ways of running the CLA bot, the very one the .NET Foundation uses. One is to use a hosted system where they keep track of the names in some database out there, and uh, that's, that's basically it. And that's what the .NET Foundation had used. To, to do that, apparently you had to have one of their bots, we had had their account in your system so that whenever that website was updated, it would kick back and update the issue saying, yes, this person signed us or whatnot. Turns out the same people that created that CLA bot also created a one based on GitHub Actions, which is fantastic. And it ends up saving a file in your repository. And so 
I had already been looking at that, given the other problems we had with the CLA bot before all of this. And so um, after a little bit of futzing and a little bit of learning about GitHub Actions in the process and general um, you know, hacking around, uh, it's working. It seems to be working properly. Uh, it, it does mean that anybody that hasn't, that anybody that, you will need to sign the CLA again. I was going to say anybody that hasn't signed the CLA again will need to sign it again. Um, if you haven't signed the CLA, you will need to on your next pull request because there's um, the list. I didn't try to go to .NET Foundation and say, hey, can you please give me all the people that were already signed? I'm like, it's just easier just to sign it because it's as simple as leaving a comment in the issue saying, I hereby assign the CLA or something, something, and it tells you the text. So it's really straightforward with a link to go read the document. So. Uh, CLA bot now works, and we will not need a .NET Foundation access at all. It's all based off of a GitHub action within our own repositories and that kind of good stuff. So CLA bot is solved. Um, the AppVare um, build reporting issue was is very mysterious. I've tr I tried a number of different things, and in the end, I think the way to solve it would be to delete the build definition and then to add it again. But there's a bunch of binaries stored in the build definition. And then I'd have to figure out how to re-upload them and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, I don't really, I wasn't like confident in all that disruption. And since I'd already been messing with the CLA bot and had learned more about GitHub Actions, and because during this whole brouhaha that happened, I actually had some um, contact with GitHub people that told me, that confirmed that public repos do have an unlimited number of minutes not the limit that's documented, which I think is like 2,000 or 5,000 minutes or something like that, which we did worry about the Wix toolset running for 30-minute builds for too many builds in a month could turn into a problem. It's not because all our repos are public. So I was like, that's fantastic. Plus, on top of all that, we don't give AppVayer money. We never have given them money. And honestly, they're a small enough company that I feel bad about continuing to use their resources with no real intent to becoming a customer. So I have got the GitHub action in place. It's actually even more straightforward than I thought it would be um, to get the GitHub action building the Wix tool set, very similar to the way that AppVayer did. But we have one problem that Sean had already tripped across when AppVayer updated its build images. Um, ARM64 builds are failing due to some behavior in Visual Studio's interactions inside the build system. So, uh, and the GitHub has the same uh, Visual Studio, I think it's 11.3, right? Is that is that right, Sean? 16.11.3, I think is where yeah. that popped up. Um, so I'm a little stimmy there for turning the builds back on, but given how I feel about AppVare, as in guilty, not that they're bad, but purely killed. Um, um, I'm going to try to figure out how to move forward with the the builds here. Sean already has an issue open with the um, Visual Studio people. I'm looking at opening an issue, or Sean opening an issue. We'll we'll discuss it um, with the GitHub image that may put a little more pressure. If we can point out how they're breaking us, maybe the GitHub guys will be a little more responsive than the Visual Studio guys with their triage people in front of the real people doing the work. Um, anyway, I try to do that. I'm pretty confident that they will fix the ARM64 thing um, before we release. So it, the worst case might even be disable ARM for a little bit on the um, build machines until they fix this issue. Well, I saw it in X64 too. So I think it's random which one. Oh, you saw it in X64 too. Interesting. I've only seen an ARM. Okay, you've seen an X64 too. Yeah, if you saw the issue, like the build that I submitted the issue against was actually X64. Oh, I, I saw 64 because I'd already seen ARM64 everywhere. Mm, okay. Well, all right. Um, I want to lean this way. We'll figure out our way through it. Um, I don't want to hold things up too much either. So uh, Anyway, we'll figure out how to navigate this build issue thing. Once we're on it, I've seen the GitHub people be really responsive when they roll out a new image. If it breaks people, they come up with fixes and workarounds pretty quickly. 
Um, since we've just moved to it, I don't have the proof on GitHub that it used to work and now it doesn't work. So I'm not sure how much their leverage will have there, um, but we'll see. So um, I don't have a concept of a previous image like AppBear does? I haven't found it, that, and it, and it surprised me. I haven't found a way to reference the previous version. I've looked some, I haven't looked a lot. Um, they have it for like GitHub, they have it for everything else, but not the virtual images from what I've been able to find. And it really does seem like something they should have because they do version them and they have a number in there. I just don't have any, see any way to say in our definition, please use this one, this version of this particular uh, virtual environment. I haven't found that yet. Um, but it is something they should add either which way. Anyway, so we're going we're gonna to get through this. We're going to get in a good spot. I'm, I'm feeling much better about how all of this GitHub stuff works together um, and how much space we can use, how much build time we have, all the what's unlimited for us in the public, uh, being public repositories, and so on and so forth. Um, so anyway, this is just uh, things that will get resolved um, such that in the end, it generally works the same way as it did before. Um, and hopefully, if anything, better. And we're not burning at Bayer's um, money for, you know, uh, for our free usage. All right. So the other but thing. But it's okay that we burn GitHub's money. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay, <cool. yeah>, absolutely. <laughs> that's Microsoft. They're supporting the the world. I. That's totally. Besides, there's if if push came to shove, I could see us paying. For GitHub because it would align with a whole bunch of other things. It's very hard for me to see how we would pay for AppVair given how it doesn't align with a lot of the other work that we've done, like in FireJoint, things like that, where money could come from. So um, I, I feel for the AppVair guys, the, the proliferation of Microsoft build systems first through VSTS and AKA Azure DevOps, now Azure Pipelines, and then GitHub Actions really put them in a tight spot. So I don't sure. feel like we should continue to use their free stuff um, if we can avoid it. I, it's just, I, I don't know, that's, that's just where I'm at. All right. Um, that works. So uh, the other thing is the .NET Foundation is doing a face-to-face -face on October 27th. So that's uh, six days from now, next Wednesday. They're doing a 9 a.m. session and a 5 p.m. session to try to hit different time zones well. Oh, I think those are Pacific time. Um, I think I, those are the Pacific time um, times. So adjust for your um, uh, time zone outside of Pacific time, also known as Fire Giant Standard Time. Um, I, I'm going to go to see basically what other people are saying and how things are going. But um, I don't, I've, I've kind of gotten to the end where I'm like, I don't know how much I really care. <laughs> I, I, I definitely have burned way more energy on the .NET Foundation than I want to. And after much thinking about it, it's just come down to, I don't want them to mess with us, which they have the copyright, so they can do some funky things there. But I don't think they would do anything wrong there because the lawyers and all the space would get very upset about it. And the rest of it, now that they're not in our project, means they shouldn't be able to mess with us for just working. And we've got a lot of people that came out quietly to support us just working, the Wix tool set, just working. Just run on you know, your build systems, just do the CLA box, that's a thing, and just, just do these things. So I'm, I'm gonna stay um, aware of the .NET Foundation. I will continue to um, communicate with them when things come up or if they ask questions. They've not been asking a lot of questions lately. They have been doing a lot of um, careful, considerate um, output of apologizing for all the things, understanding all the things, understanding where people have gone and or where people were upset and have not really made any significant changes yet or anything like that going forward. Not that I expect them to, it's still kind of early. Um, a lot of what they do is volunteer based. And so, but the net net is um, I'm going to work hard to make sure there's someone at .NET Foundation I can always email. So when these things happen, I can get a direct line back and I will have to work to maintain that. I have that now at the .NET Foundation. 
Um, and so just to avoid a lot of this big stuff ever happening again, but otherwise, I just, I don't think it's going to be a big deal. And they have to go figure out, honestly, what the .NET Foundation is going to be from here. Um, a lot of people questioning, what should they really be? Uh, and so uh, you can go to face-to-face -face if you want to hear them talk about it, talk about what they think they've learned. Um, there's apparently a place you can ask questions and stuff like that. You, you can see this on their website, the face-to-face -the -face thing they're going to send out and on their Twitter. Um, so that's the state of it. I'm kind of at... Uh, I think I'm at plus zero with the .NET Foundation, to use Bob's terms, or meh uh, from the whole thing. It's like, yeah, make sure they don't mess with us and after that. So that's kind of where we're at, which is honestly a lot where we were before, except I have someone I can at least email and say, hey, these things are happening. You should go fix them, or at least consider fixing them, and then hopefully they don't. And we're also in a better position where they can not impact us directly at the project and put all these random hurdles in place again. So that's kind of the .NET Foundation update. Um, meh. We're better on our project side, better insulated from changes from them and whatever they want to do. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, you guys have questions? I know it sounds very uh, anticlimactic given all of the massive excitement of the first week around it, and I use excitement not necessarily in a positive way, but lots of energy being thrown around. So, uh, which honestly, it's kind of fine. <laughs> it's, I don't know what else we could have happened um, in the end. All right, moving on. This is our last design discussion to cover. Um, and I like your confidence. I'm sorry. Oh well, it's the last one I have on the list. Sorry. Okay. I, yeah. I, I I I I do. I should not speak to the future. I'm just saying at the moment. All right. And and this issue is pretty well documented through issues. Um. So here. Um. .NET Framework package definitions are failing. Signature verification. So, quick reminder. .NET. Uh. Found <laughs> framework. Nope. Whew, you have to work this out. I did it wrong the other way around before. All right. .NET Framework updated their signature, changed the authentic code uh, thumbprint, the thumbprint and the authentic code signatures that Burn used to validate things, and um, broke our ability in Wix 3 to validate that the packages could be updated, uh, could be installed even though they were silently updating them on the server with bug fixes. And they had been silently updating for some decent years amount of time beforehand. Um, so this breaking, this breakage was uh, a surprise, although not necessarily technically, but the fact that it happened and the way it happened was a surprise. So um, we solved this by updating to the latest, uh, latest thumbprint in um, latest signature. So thumbprint, signature, not thumbprint, signature um, in Wix 3. But in Wix 4, we had removed the ability to validate by authenticate signature because we knew of this weakness where if the signature changed between certificates, then it wouldn't work and all of this would fall apart. Um, so in Wix 4, we can't even handle the case where they silently update it, which they had been doing, we expect, we was really tracking, but we expect they had been doing for quite a while beforehand. Um, so the option, this discussion here is to bring back the ability to do what we did with .NET Framework before, which is verifying the payload by the authentic code signature. And then Bob made one more suggestion here about using Wix variables for download URLs um, uh, and I'm to help mitigate this solve. I'm not exactly sure exactly how this one fits in, um, but fits in very well. It, yes, I'm only because I didn't study it well enough, not because it doesn't. So, um, y 
yes, Jacob, you're right. The issue is that they, they changed it in a way that would break burn, but they didn't use a new permalink, which would have been better, um, which would have been the correct well, way to solve it, it. To be fair to the world, not to Microsoft, uh, you know, they're not supposed to do this. These are permalinks. Perma is, you know, permanent, I think. So, you know, the fact that they're they're silently updating the the target of that permalink is is, you know, not ideal. Acceptable. <laughs> ideal. Yeah. Fine. I don't. I was trying to soften it, but I I, yeah. I don't I don't I, disagree. I, I don't generally disagree um, with that. So, I, I mean, I've poked at this for a while before this, long before this, things like that. Um, I think in the Wix 4 time frame, the best option is to bring back the ability to use the Authentico signature so that we can at least roll along for a while longer because chances are they're going to continue to do this in the uh, .NET firmware because no, nothing they've said has suggested they're going to change their behavior. No, no. In fact, they're they're expanding on it. Um, the WebView two, the the Chromium based yep. uh, view. They're doing it too. Uh, they're absolutely doing it too. Yeah. So we can expect this to continue. This is a new. This is the new, brave new world. And I don't think, from what we've talked about so far, that there is any alternative. Not, any, I mean, not, is, is there a magic one that no, I haven't thought of? No, no, I, I have not come up with anything that will work like this. That this does without a lot more infrastructure in place, um, above and beyond, like just what's in Burn. Um, so I, I, I think we need to bring this back, given that we know that one of the most important redists available is going to continue a behavior that essentially depends on this working. Also, knowing that they can do things even with this behavior, to break it, a.k.a. change the signature of their certificate. Yeah. The fact that they hadn't done it for a very long time suggests that, well, at least that doesn't happen very often. And we'll just well, have it was to... a switch from SHA-1 to SHA-2, right? Exactly. Okay. And I wonder if there wasn't a security thing mixed into it, but I can't get anybody to say that. I can't get anybody to say it wasn't that, and I can't get anybody to say it was. So I, I don't know. But the fact that they didn't just go, no, 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 it was just we had to move the shot too. I'm just <laughs> I have any misgivings that it wasn't that. Um, anyway, so I think the right thing is to bring back Authentico signature verification. Unless someone else had a, a more brilliant idea than I, than I came up with, which is absolutely possible. Um, namely, Sean, because you've been in here, Sean, too. I didn't know if you had another idea um, for solving this or tackling it. I don't know how else to verify that the payload is what you think it is, yeah. unless it's a hash or a signature. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So I think we need to do the work to bring this back. Um, I don't, I, I do think we should bring it back differently than it was in Wix 3, because right in Wix 3 it was suppress. Or did we change it in Wix 3? Did we do the breaking change to change it from suppress? Oh. Yeah, that, I think that was one of the, uh, yeah, one of the, the special doc notes because of mm -hmm. how we word it. Mm -hmm. I think you already did it. So I think in 3 the default changed. Yeah, that's what mine is. But then I, I think in four, you actually did change the name of the attribute. Oh, I thought I removed it. Well, I and removed I, it, but I think you changed it. Oh, yeah, Rob, Rob you, didn't move it. you didn't move it, remove it. It was there all through the repo changes until Bob removed it like a year ago or whatever. Okay. Got it. Um, that was a fun machete job. So I, I, well, because I, I also remove catalog signing at the same time. Yes. Okay. Um, let's 
So I think we just have to bring this back the way it was in four before. Is that it in the end for this for this issue here? I think so. Um, it's worth looking at. Um, um, I Sean, I commented on one of your changes to update the signatures. Um, I think in three where we still require the hash, at least on the compiler side. So that's something, if we can clean that up, that would be nice as well. But I, I changed that when I did the remote payload. Oh, okay. Remember when I renamed it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, cool, cool. So there's a lot less required things now. Okay. But well, then that's you know better than three. Even, so. But you're right that because I had done it after you pulled it, pulled off any code, oh. it made sense to require it because that was the only option. Right, right, right. All right. So it would be a little bit more complicated than just reverting my change. Yep. Um, so how do we want to distribute this work? I'm happy to take the tool set changes if it comes down to that. I mean, but it'll take me longer to get back in the burn stuff if Sean's like, I don't, you don't want to get involved in it. Yeah, I can do the burn stuff. All right. Okay. Um, all right. I think between two of us, we'll go bring this thing back. Now, this last thing, I don't know how to weigh, so I'm going to let Bob talk to it because it's his. Right, so I open this because um, the workaround that we can tell people right now is that for for burn in Wix v3 is do not use the Microsoft FW link URLs uh, because you know <laughs> sorry it. <clears throat> Right now, if you can't rely on on you know a particular URL staying what it was, then hash verification is is out the window. Um, switching to authentic code does not guarantee that you're getting the same thing that you want. It just means the same entity signed it. Um, for some people, for some companies, that's not a sufficient guarantee. Um, a hash is a very strong guarantee. The you know authentic code subject and thumbprint is a weaker guarantee. Um, if you want the strong guarantee, you need to today you need to extract the package groups out of WixNetFX extension and any others um, and rewrite them to say point to your own you know S3 bucket or Azure Blob or whatever. Um, so this issue is just to say, yeah, we already have Wix variables for a bunch of this stuff. Let's add one more for the URL so that someone who wants to host a particular version and keep a hash guarantee um, can still use it. Um, now, that said, if as part of, of the previous issue, bring back authentic code and then update the NetFX extension to only specify authentic code, then the hash is missing. And this issue, 6462, is yeah, fairly worthless. Um, you'll have to generate uh, the hash in order to point you know, to your own uh, copy and keep the hash guarantee. Uh, so if the authoring, if as part of the previous issue, the authoring in NetFX extension removes the hash, then this issue is probably not worth implementing. So I, I hear you. I, this may be useful because it would have saved us in the emergency. We could have told these people to upload the version that they, I guess that it presumes that you had the previous version that you could upload it somewhere. Well, yeah, 
and I'm old school configuration management, so I would be fine with that because of course I have a copy. Right. Um, but yeah, no, it, 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 it wouldn't have hurt. I don't know that it would have, yeah, I mean, you're right. There, there are plenty of ways in which it would not have, have helped. Um, but the truth is it still wouldn't solve the, the big problem, which is that bundles out in the field were affected. Yeah. Yeah. This is something you do after you go, Oh wait, I now have to protect myself. And, um, you know, until it happened, people weren't aware that they needed to protect themselves from Microsoft. So I guess I, I'm not, I, I can kind of see how these, wait, these seems like reasonable things to make variables given everything else that we make variables. It's like, look, if you want to self-host .NET Framework, you override this variable. Yeah, but like I said, that's not enough, right? If we change, if we change the Wix NetFX authoring to no longer include the hash, then that authoring is no good. No, it is. Unless, well, it will. Well, I don't, the I don't think work. it was good in the first place because the URL and the hash have to be, there have to be stay in tandem. So, yeah. unless if we, you're I, using authentic code signature. Well, that well, it still applies for the authentic code signature. Like, if you if you want to specify a custom URL for your package, then you're providing your, a package at that URL with a specific signature. So. If we go update the NetFX extension to be in line with the new one that Microsoft uploaded, then all of a sudden your bundle's <laughs> going to start breaking. Yeah, that's true, because we'll have the new signature in there, and then you'll be, yeah. So that's what I was trying to point to in my comment, was that just the download URL is not helpful. Um. Sorry, I'm missing something. If you provide a download URL to your own Amazon bucket or, or Azure blob or whatever, it would be sufficient because you'd be responsible for changing the URL when you want to update to a newer version. Yeah, but what happens when you update Wix and all of a sudden that hash is a different hash? No, that's what I'm saying. The, it does not work. It, it doesn't work if, um, well, one, it doesn't work if we drop the hash, which is the, you know, your issue, right? Um, and it doesn't work if there is a hash, but I, I'm, I'm not seeing where that is going to happen. Well, I mean, you, this URL could work with the thumbprint as well. You can just upload the original version that you download, and that'll verify until they until Microsoft updates their server again. Which, in case, we'll have to update Wix to have a new thumbprint. I mean, the the same thing. That's the same problem is there, whether it's the hash or the thumbprint. The difference is but, you don't get broken until you take a new version of Wix. And you do a build. So if you were to self-host the .NET framework, you would then be, you would not have hit this problem until you took a new version of Wix or a new version of the .NET framework and tested it and went, oh, hey, something's broken. And then you'd have time to adjust to it as opposed to, oh, we're in the field and we're now broken because you're dependent on a Microsoft URL, right? It allows you to essentially say, I'm willing to host a .NET framework at this point, and at that, as long as that endpoint is up, my bundle will now work. I can guarantee that because my endpoint's there. Burn will do at least an authentic code check on it, so it's you know, at least in the right vein, and everything will just keep working, right? So mm -hmm. you, it, you remove the Microsoft servers from your equation. That's what it allows you to do. I guess my problem with this is that at this point, the only thing in Wix that you're using is the install command. Yes. However many parts there are to getting this readers. Yeah. Right. Which is which is why I'm I'm questioning the value of my own of my own issue. Um, the, you know, obviously all of the the package groups are easily you know copied and pasted into your own project. Um, I was looking here as just like a, hey, let's make it possible um, to to avoid that. But 
you know, it, it, you own, if you own the URL, then, you know, you have, you, you have high confidence um, that what's there is, is correct. And maybe the hash isn't necessary. Um, I'd argue there are organizations that, that would not be sufficient, right? It does not prevent, you know, various attacks. At that point, though, yeah. you have to come and do the remote payload and rewrite all of the command line yourself. Or we have to allow you to have variables to replace the hash numbers. Ooh. Well, yeah. No, no, no. And again, I'm assuming in in fixing the previous issue that the, the hash goes away. Yeah. Probably so, uh, and, and if that is the case, then this issue has no value. Okay. Because... You're you're better off copying and pasting at that point. All right, then I think you and Sean are in complete agreement. Um, I was willing to let it have some value, <laughs> but <laughs> at some point it does turn into here's a function call. It takes 20 parameters in, and it does all these if statements based on those 20 parameters. You might just be better off taking the one part of the function that you care about and copying it rather than trying to make it configurable in every way. <clears throat> and maybe that's just the way the Thunder framework is in this case. Well, I just I don't want to I don't want to complicate um, what most people can use in order. I, I fully admit this is an edge case. Most people are completely fine with relying on Microsoft. That Microsoft isn't going to swap out the .NET framework redistrib redistributable for yeah you know, I don't know to boost the the numbers for Chromium Edge. <laughs> yeah, but but you can absolutely that could happen, right? Because again, all you're verifying is the identity of the, the thing that was signed. You're yeah, not sure. identifying, you know, anything else about the, the file. Yeah. And of course, with an XE package, that's, you know, a, a pretty big black box. So yeah. uh, I just, if you want that security, then you're going to use your own URL that yeah. you control and you're going to stick with hash. <coughs> Excuse me. Yep. I think that's right. Okay. So I think this goes away. Yep. And Sean and I split this one to close this one. And we just know that there's this weakness behind that 6438 has proved is a reality. I mean, I guess we could close 6438 at this point because technically we've fixed it. Um, true, although it's broken in four, but four is not released enough to matter. So you're right, we could close it. I, I updated four. Way. Huh? I updated four. Like the package definitions in four should be correct right now. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. But they're all based off hashes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought you're right. This doesn't add the value that we need. Um, six four four seven adds the value we need. And I mean, basically, right. we've we already implemented six four three eight. Like I already did the work. Sounds great. Then. Do you want the honor of declaring victory? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I think 6462 is just going to go. Yep. All right. Um, uh, Rob, I hate to do this, but it turns out there were two issues that were not marked triage. Ooh. Uh, so they did not show up in our... So is that label none? Uh, I added triage. How did this not? How did this get lost? I don't know. Interesting. Let's go look at that. Uh, I wrote Microsoft, maybe MS Build, locked, and they said it's us. Oh, it's using Heat Directory. Oh, so it could actually be in those targets rather than votive. Yeah, all right. All right, someone could look at it. Put it in four. Someone that wants to take a look at what in heat directory could go take a swing at it. Very possible. Feature request, uh, wing it. I suppose, not with these names. That name's terrible. Um, Uh, 
and the install is completely scripted. Yeah, if you have to download it, yeah, I guess that's the argument. Um, it's not a thing in four, so it'd be a thing for three. Although I guess they want to wing it install the v6. Why would you v wing it install the v6? I'm not actually. I'm not sure that wing it supports the uh, v6 installer. And I don't know why you want to do that. I guess you just uh, have a whole new box. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the big I guess. theoretical advantage of All right. wing it. Well, well, let's put it in a four. I'll look. I, I don't know how hard, how much work it is. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Go ahead and give it to me and put it in four. It'll be like one of the last things I do after the new gets all up to date. This because it's just for three. No, it could be for no. This would be for four. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so you're just saying the V6. Yeah, for the V6. Um, V6 is. And 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 maybe I'll do three. I don't know, but this maybe not because this is .NET tool dash G or whatever uh, Wix to get well, Wix now. So it's well, he's asking for Wix three. I mean, just yeah, I know, I know he's asking for Wix three. So and, and I'll just have to be like, ah, do we want to bother with Wix three? Kind of thing. Okay. So yeah, I agree. It doesn't really other than the V six. It doesn't. Right. But put it in four. So it'll be one of those like. Yeah, I'll look at it if it's if it makes sense for the V6, maybe it's easier for three fourteen and I'll remember to look at it then. Okay. I don't I mean the visual Studio, it's it's in the it has to be the I'm updating my box for the first time. Yeah, yeah. I thought there's a way of telling Visual Studio here, here's all the extensions I want. Please make them and then you can just check them in, but if anyway. you, Oh, yeah. But again that's manual. Not a Visual Studio did it, but yeah. So. Well, but that would require. Sorry, the settings file is manual. You'd have to, you'd have to select it by hand or sync your sync your settings. Blah blah blah. Well, here's the thing. They ask nicely, and they know that it's all additive. So it's like I'm not going to dismiss it out of. <laughs> sure, sure. I get it. They ask nicely. They know it's not important. Hey, if 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 the V6 if the V6 works, I, I don't think it's directly supported. So it'd be one of those. You know, you got to write a, a probably a PowerShell script to make it work. I don't know if the if the the Winget YAML supports anything different. I don't know. All right, um, I'm going to open the floor for other things that people want to talk about. Um, while you're thinking about and typing in your questions, I want to raise this thing. Um, I've been wandering around in uh, uh, broadcaster land. What do they call it? Creator. With creator space, I don't know the names for people. Basically, people that are broadcasting live stuff that they do on the internet, like we do. Rob wants meetings. to be an influencer. No, the, yeah, that's the thing. I thought the word was influencer, but it's not anymore. They, I think the influencers didn't like the name influencer, so they stopped using the word influencer. Anyway, um, the the, the thing is that creator. Twitch, yeah, it, it's gone to creator, but I don't know what they call their world thing. Which creator is not a terrible thing. It's just so generic. Anyway. Um, the point is, Twitch got hacked, got hacked in a big way. Um, they All of their source code was stolen, and all of their <laughs> – all the money they paid people was stolen as well, the public people. Um, the the which, money was stolen? No, no, the, the amounts that they oh, paid. Oh, oh, yeah, which yeah. you're like, yeah, so what? Now I can see what the top you know Twitch <laughs> people were making. But it has really fascinating and complicated implications when you think about the – the uh, brand deals and the sponsorship negotiations that they're doing with other people now that their Twitch uh, payment is public. <laughs> it's just basically the people can say, hey, we know how much money you're making now, and then you can get into these arguments where they're doing sponsorship or brand deals before. Anyway, real mess uh, for Twitch. Um, and so I, I've just been looking around, and a lot, not a lot, a class of people have been moving off of Twitch and onto YouTube Live. And so um, I haven't experimented with it yet, but I'm considering YouTube Live. I mentioned Zoom in the past. Jacob said he would prefer not Zoom because it was more, I think, it, because it was one more thing to run and install, which is an interesting point. Um, YouTube Live is basically a copy of Twitch. 
um, so it wouldn't be much different. It also has the ability to automatically take your live broadcasts and store them as your YouTube videos, which would save me that much more time of uploading and putting it all together. It would essentially just be there automatically since we're uploading the videos there as it is. Um, I, I don't know how much cachet we get by being on Twitch versus being on YouTube Live. I think it's starting to switch because Twitch keeps doing things that damage their brand. Um, so there's that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I want to, I'm going to play with YouTube live a little bit to see if it has any major downsides. Um, it is a, seems to be a fairly fast follower of Twitch, but if you're a follower, there could be something that we expect to work that doesn't. Um, but I'm not aware of anything right now that that's the case. Um, so anyway, that's one thing thing, random thing that I have coming from my side, we may move from Twitch to YouTube Live because I heard people said they don't want to go to the Zoom meeting, which, okay. Um, or other things. Anything else going around out there? I think that's about it. You guys have anything? Nope. Nope. All right. All right, I think I filled enough space to give time for people to drop questions and things like that in that. In the chat, uh, it's great to see you both, Jake and Ron. Happy to have you here. Um, I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, two weeks from now is November 4th. I think that sounds like a normal day in the world, so we should be able to do that. Um, yeah, two weeks from now. Same time, I think it's going to be the same place. If it isn't, I'll let you know. Um, but until then, you guys take it easy. You can put in your calendars. Two weeks from now, we'll be right. Uh, we'll be back online. Which URL? I will send that out later. Until then, you guys all take it easy. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.